Welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Fred Davey. Um, Fred, it's been a tough old few years for the Lib Dems. What would a better performance look like tomorrow for you? Well, I think we'll make progress. Um, it's difficult to put a, a number on that or a size on that because it's been such a weird campaign. Mm. I've never known a campaign in my whole life where we've spent most of it not being able to knock on someone's doors, not being able to talk to people, not even to be able to deliver leaflets for part of it. And I think, you know, Liberal Democrats are at their best when we're the community politicians knocking on doors, talking to so people. How have you coped? Because I mean, famously, the Lib Dems, you know, are strong at the sort of grow, the grassroots and at this local campaigning, but you've not really been able to do it as normal, have you? Yeah, it's been a real challenge for us. I mean, I mean we had a stop campaign when we saw the... We had the, the sad death of His Royal Highness, then I've actually been in self-isolation myself. You know, when you can't get on the campaign trail and you're a politician, in election time, it's really, really difficult. Um, so that's why it's just so difficult to cool. Um, I think we will make some gains off both Labour and the Conservatives. Mm. But, but um, that's because I've been going around the country listening to our campaigners. When we have engaged with people, they've liked what we're saying, whether it's on the environment, uh, where we've got such a strong record. I mean, four out of the top five councils in England for recycling are Liberal Democrats, for example. So we've got a great uh, story but to if, tell on but the if, environment. But if, um, you know, climate change, the environment is your thing... I mean, people are voting for the Greens now, aren't they? That's the problem. Well, in vast tracts of the country, it's the Liberal Democrats who are flying the environment flag. And, of course, we're not just uh, a one-issue party. We're a party that talks about the care services. You know, um, uh, I've asked and, and, uh, uh, and argued that Liberal Democrats should be the voice of carers. I have a caring history myself. But beyond that, I think that... Care is one of the issues that's failed, that governments, successive governments have failed to tackle. You know, Boris Johnson promised he would tackle it. He mm. said he, he'd work cross party. He's failed miserably. And it looks as though it's not going to be in the Queen's, Queen's speech. Well, exactly. And I think that's deeply worrying. Well, what we've seen in this pandemic is the importance of carers, whether in the NHS, mm. whether they're in the care homes, or actually unpaid carers, uh, millions of them mm. looking after their loved ones at home. But, and they need a voice and they need more support and they're not getting it. But one of the things that I do feel is characteristic of our times is the way that people obsess about single issues. I mean, you could argue that for quite a long time the Tory party was all about Brexit, and we just talked about the Green Party. Isn't a sort of fundamental problem for the Lib Dems that you sort of feel of another age, in a way that, that you know, the Liberal part of your identity, you know, still lots of people who are proud to be Liberals, but... You know, we're in a, this is an angry age, it's an illiberal age, it's a single-issue age. I, 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 do you ever worry you're slightly out of your time? No, I'll give you an example. Covid ID cards. Mm. You know, I and the Liberal Democrats led the charge against uh, Boris Johnson's uh, dalliance with Covid ID cards. Mm. And we got a lot of strong support for that from all sides of the political spectrum. So that championing of civil liberties, which is so core to Liberal Democrats, I think it, it shows that we're relevant to uh, the issues of the day. And, you know, when I talk about the vision of the party, mm. of being a, a champion of a fairer, greener, more caring country, that actually resonates with ordinary people. And going back to the local elections, mm. we are community politicians. And when you listen to people in your community and show that you're the ones who can get things done, mm. people respond to that. Well, we've just been talking about travelling, uh, travel, and it's a related issue to the whole issue of ID cards. I mean, Leila Moran, your colleague, put her name to a report just the other day which suggested no-one should be travelling this summer. Is that, is that Lib Dem policy? Well, she was right to say that the government needs to be far more cautious. And let's remember, one of the reasons why we saw so many deaths early on in this pandemic was the government failed to take action at the borders. And they failed right at the early stage and they failed throughout it. And so what I think many people, cross-party, because it's a cross-party group that, that, that you're referring to, what they have said is that you know, the government needs to be careful. We saw from your WHO uh, colleague oh. earlier in the programme that um, the pandemic is still raging across the world with a threat of, of variants that um, may even oh. uh, mean that the vaccine doesn't work. So we still have to be careful. Now, you know, I hope we can get uh, a safe regime so people can travel. Of course I do. Of course everybody does. But we need to be cautious. Those figures, I th thought, from Asia, from, oh. from Latin America, were truly frightening. Yeah, horrifying. Yeah, horrifying. Um, now, one of, the, one of the seismic changes we've seen in British politics over the last few years has been what's happened in Scotland, the rise of the SNP, one referendum, pressure for a second referendum. 
I mean, Scotland used to be incredibly important to the Lib Dems, but a bit like Labour, a bit like, to an extent, the Tories, you've all been pushed down in recent years. Is there any way back? Well, Scotland still is very important to the Liberal Democrats. We have uh, four of my colleagues in the Liberal Democrat Party Party from Scotland. We have five members of the Scottish Parliament, and we think we can grow tomorrow. We think we will uh, gain. Um, and I think it's critical for a party like the Liberal Democrats, mm. who are UK-wide, mm. um, who aspire to represent everyone in our country, mm. that we are uh, a real contenders in Scotland. And I think our message, put forward so brilliantly by Willie Rennie, which I think has been a fantastic campaign that he's led mm. for the Scottish Liberal Democrats, where we said put recovery first, let's put the Scottish nationalists on the back foot. You know, the Scottish nationalists, at a time when we had the deepest recession for mm. 300 years, the worst health crisis for 100 years, wants to talk about dividing things up, dividing the UK, dividing Scotland, because it's a very divisive issue. And I think Willie uh, and the Liberal Democrats have been right to say, no, no, put recovery first. And it's been interesting, when Liberal Democrats led on that, we've seen both Labour and the Conservatives come behind that message. So I want to ask Tom about this. I mean, uh, I'm not sure the SNP are that much on the back foot. I mean, you know, c certainly recent polls seem to show they may well get there. The majority they want to argue they've got a mandate for another referendum. How should, in your view, Keir Starmer respond to the SNP getting that kind of uh, majority. Oh well, we're. Uh, I mean, you, you know, we're a unionist party. I don't think we should go down the route of. Another I mean, John Macdonald thinks that if the people of Scotland are indicating they should have a second referendum, Labour should, you know, fall behind that. You don't think that's right? I think right. he's wrong on that. Uh, and, and more importantly, I mean, I think Labour is very lucky to have Anna Sawa, who's our new leader. He looks fresh. Uh, and he's trying to... I've been following... You know, when you're sitting on the outside, you see what these leaders are doing. He's trying to bring the country together, rather, as Ed is saying, that Willie Ren Rennie's trying to do. I mean, there are big issues facing Scotland on the economy, on the post-Covid, on post-Brexit settlement. And do you think Boris Johnson has any chance of stopping the momentum towards a referendum? <laughs> we'll have to see what the result is. Look, I, think, I think if there is a majority, in the, if people vote mm. for a majority of SNPs that want a second mm. referendum, there is a clear democratic mandate. Mm. I think the government, exactly as Ed was implying, is entitled to say, not now. Now is not yeah. the right time. Yeah. And the polling actually shows Scottish people don't want something in the immediate future. Yeah. But I think it would be a mistake to say, no, never. We're just going to ignore... If, if people do vote that way tomorrow, I think it would be a mistake to just say, we're going to ignore it. That's just going to build support further. Yeah. So I think, you know, we'll have to wait and see what the results are. Mm. Um, but the right response, I think, would be to say this isn't the right time now. We've got to focus on recovery, but yeah. we hear what people have said. Now, look, sadly, we are almost out of time. I want to say thanks to you, Ed, uh, Tom and Gavin. That's it. As election results dribble in over the weekend, we'll know whether Starmer's star is rising or exploding and whether the big battle for the rest of this parliament will be over whether Scotland is to separate from the UK. So much to discuss right here next week. And don't forget if, when you're voting tomorrow, apparently you'll need to take your own pen. Bye for now.